Hey YouTube, Drago the Boar again. Since I have the time, I might as well make another video. I know I'm on a bloody roll, and this will hopefully somewhat make up for the long laps in between videos that I do for some reason. Since I'm on the topic of Middle Ages, I might as well talk about Western European armor throughout the Middle Ages. For well, let's talk about the one of the greatest military inventions of all time. Known was used for at least two thousand years, so it was effective. That is chainmail. If you go back to one of my earlier videos called the Armored Boar, and then the one right after that. I talk about chainmail that I actually have. It's a chainmail halberd, which is basically a shirt made out of chainmail. That's basically it. Chainmail is thousands of iron or steel rings made into a well, basically a garment that covers. The bit most basic, it covers the uh, main part of the body and a bit on the sleeves, which is what I have. In later periods, throughout the Middle Ages, roughly the 11th century, which is 10 hundreds or thousands, whatever, it would cover the entire arm, cover down to the entire arm, and would be slightly down onto the hips for more protection. In the 13th century, which is 1200s, it would cover, it would be male hosen leggings, I'm not sure on the specific term, that would cover basically the entire leg. So by the 1300s or 14th century, a, a knight who could afford chainmail because armor was super expensive back then, about the equivalent of a modern car, a well function, a well a rich knight could be virtually all covered in armor. And then well, underneath the chainmail, he would have a um, a padded, quilted garment known as a gambeson, which came in a variety of forms. A gambeson's function was basically to help uh, reduce the force from blows. So, if a warrior had chainmail. Uh, had a canvas and underneath his mail, he got hit by a heavy blow, say by a mace or an axe or something, a heavy weapon. Maybe not all his bones were broken. And then later on in the 1200s or 13th century, back bought back by the Crusaders was the tabard. A, for the most part, a sleeveless, long, almost dress like garment that would go over the chainmail to protect the chainmail from the elements because it's a bunch of metal rings and metal can rust, heats up, cools down, it gets wet, and it usually stays wet for a good while. So the tabard would be front and back, usually going to the knees, or they were longer, or later on in the medieval, in the Middle Ages, they were shorter, basically covering the armor, and protecting it and the wearer from the elements. A good portion uh, for the noblemen, which were the main ones who had chainmail and tabard, they would. Express the uh, family press 
or a sword or a lion or one of those. It would be right front and center on the tower so that everyone would know what family this knight was from and they could see him coming from a long distance away. It was basically a knight only thing and well let the enemy see them coming is super effective. As for the helmets of the Middle Ages, for a good portion of the early medieval ages there was a conical helmet, the Norman style helmet. It was usually made out of four elements of steel early on with a nose dart down to here. Basically wide vision, protected face. Of course there was a large variety in the Viking period. And no, Vikings did not wear helmets with horns. No. No. And later on, the helmets were made out of one piece of steel to make it stronger and better reflect blows. And in the 1300s, they had the Great Helmet, which is basically, well, basically wearing a bucket on your head. It covers the entire head in solid metal. It's very protective but lacking in vision and breathing holes. It's hard to see out of, hard to breathe out of. And it's hard to hear anything. Especially with padding underneath the uh, armor. Later on, they added a cone to the uh, great helm, which made it a sugar loaf helm. It made it more protective because if you got hit right here, because the top of the great helm was flat, if you get hit right here, it'll break your neck. Not good. And throughout the medieval period, they would add pieces of plate until the 1450s and early 1500s where they basically had all plate on them. Virtually all in various rich countries like Germany and Italy specifically uh, well uh, rich knight could be basically all covered in metal with a great amount of articulation. Articulation is basically small pieces of the plate armor melded together and attached so a warrior could have flexibility where he needed it. That armor still had weaknesses but plate armor which was hardened in a specific way in a forge basically arrowproof. Basically unless you found the gaps or had a really big weapon to use against the plate armor knight, you were screwed. Absolutely screwed. Nothing's getting through that armor. Not a nil. Made them literally attack. Mm -hmm. So basically, since their inception in the 11th century, knights were number one, and we'll talk about this later. So, I'll video's in. Bye.